we have seen quite some good initiatives but we can do more i'm sure from the government especially the current set of students have a variety of choice yes we've seen a uh, more number of young ladies come to college than uh, young men there has not been a significant increase in stem courses though i will say that there has been an increase across the years this year was not particularly significant in terms of an increase we do have the same number of courses on offer some of them in the arts some of them in the sciences and uh, we continue the trend one of the main issues that affect stem courses i feel is infrastructure labs equipment software these are a problem because the pace at which technology develops is very fast and to keep up with the pace of development is always a challenge by the time you invest the equipment or the technology becomes redundant so therefore a constant updation is required so that is one of the main challenges that we face the second big obstacle is to find a uh, competent faculty to offer training in these uh, stem courses so these are the two main uh, hurdles that we face we've invested in laboratories we've invested in uh, software but more importantly we've invested in the attitude where we encourage our young people and our faculty to link up what they are studying with other areas with other developments with technology which is happening all over the world so that's how we've been trying to keep in pace with developments uh from the government we have seen quite some good uh initiatives but we can do more i'm sure from the government especially because one is to increase the investment in education because if we are leaders in the field today we need to sustain that leadership and we will not be able to sustain that leadership unless there is increased investment by the government in tertiary education which means research and education one other aspect which i would like to put forward here is the fact that uh, rather than consider silos in terms of exclusivity we should think in terms of merging blending collaborating with arts and sciences and i can tell you from the experience of st stephen's college that our students turn out to be successful because of the constant interaction between the sciences and the humanities we have well rounded personalities who are good in their disciplines but who are also good as human beings because of this constant interdependence interaction between the humanities and the sciences so if the government can support the new kind of courses that we have in mind and for one thing college has always been in favor of autonomy and we hope the government will support uh, college's pursuit of autonomy we will be able to do much better
Yes, we have not seen a dip in the demand for courses in the humanities. In fact, we've seen uh, that there is a demand for more courses in the humanities. And uh, thanks to the national education policy, we see a healthy attitude of interdisciplinary studies, which is very, very beneficial. I think the current set of students have a variety of choice, a variety which was not there, let us say, 10 years ago. And this is thanks to technology, thanks to online courses, thanks to encouragement of languages. And I think the benefit is for the student because now the student has a range of disciplines, interdisciplinary areas to choose from. And this only makes for a better uh, set of students graduating from the institutions. So I think this is good, but I don't see any specific uh, focused increase in just the STEM courses. I think it is an all around growth and development and increase. Uh, going by what we see in college, I can say that increasingly more women are opting for tertiary and higher education, but I wouldn't say that they opt more for STEM courses than for other courses. I think on the whole, women are more inclined towards higher education. Uh, not necessarily towards STEM. Yes, we've seen a more number of young ladies come to college than young men. From last year, we've got a new course, at least the name is new. It used to be called the BA program, but now it is called Bachelors in Interdisciplinary Studies, which is extremely popular. And one of the reasons why this is popular is because it affords the students who take this course multiple opportunities after this. So the student can opt for, let's say, a subject like philosophy or economics or English to be a minor course, well, they can also think in terms of a major course. And the major course could be political science, it could be history, or it could be English. And so it gives the student the best of both worlds. They major in one, they also have a number of electives from which during the course of their undergraduate program, if they find that their interest has moved from a major to, let us say, an elective, the current structure of the courses permit them to continue their interest in what till then has been only an elective. That I think is a big advantage for the student. One of the things that we should not compromise on, which we should not give up on, is to pay attention to the different kinds of boards which are there. I understand that there are complications in terms of compatibility between boards, but each board, whether it's the state board or whether it's the central board or whether it's the ICSC, each has a unique set of contributions in the life of the student, the academic life of the student. And if India, is today a world leader. It is because in the so many years which have gone by, we have brought to bear, we have respected, we have encouraged all of these differences, thereby creating a pool of excellent young men and women who offer not only to the industry, but to the world as well, a range of talents and abilities. And as you know, it's harmful 
In fact, it's even dangerous to do a straight jacketing. And if we narrow down the choices to just one kind of board or one kind of entrance exam, I fear it's going to do us great harm. Certainly, when the whole world is driven by change, by a multiplicity of choices, what we should also encourage within the educational system is a multiplicity of choices, which means that every university should encourage students from different boards to come in and bring their benefits, bring their positive elements and overcome their negative elements. In a country like India, which naturally is varied and has a range of uh, talents, abilities, cultures, languages, we should bring in all of those and enhance the learning in the classroom. Uh, it has been very good so far and I hope the new education, the national education policy will encourage these differences including the entrance exam which I think should be differently uh, thought of, differently administered. One of the first things we should do is to increase the industry partnership with academia. It's very important because we have a lot of inert research which is happening. Research which has no active bearing on practical aspects of life and living. So the industry is perhaps the best set of people who can guide academicians on what kind of research is needed. Having said that, I must also say, as someone coming from the humanities, that not all of research should be expected to produce immediate practical results. There are also many results which come from research which are not immediately tangible. It takes time, it takes a gestation period, it affects the mind and it influences the mind in many positive ways which we sometimes cannot measure immediately. So one is to create an awareness using the industry. Number two, to understand that research is a long-term plan. Sometimes it's not immediate. The results are not instantly visible. It'll take time. So we should respect that as well. The other aspect is the government should invest more in terms of research. And they should perhaps think in terms of a test or an engagement with those who are interested or who say they are interested in research to really find out how their research is going to help. Of course, every research student has to go through an interview, has to put up a proposal, but perhaps we should uh, do this in a more focused manner, in a more refined manner, so that the results are sometimes, or more often, more clearly understood. We've got a whole slew of uh, new courses that uh, we've offered across a range of disciplines. And some of these courses are unique, not available anywhere else in India. They've been planned and they've, been, uh, they've taken years in planning this course, the, these set of courses. Uh, we have courses ranging from pure STEM courses to interdisciplinary courses. I'd like to keep that as a surprise till the time we get autonomy. As soon as we get autonomy, we'll be in a position to roll out these courses in a phased manner. We'll offer uh, a few of them initially, and as we get stronger, we'll offer more.